Hello, my name is Eldon Matlick and I'm the Horn Professor here at the University of Oklahoma. I'm going to be talking to you all about the preliminary horn auditions for the 2013 Oklahoma All-State Band and Orchestra. I'm going to briefly talk about various features and strategies regarding each of the excerpts. Then, at the conclusion, you will hear each etude performed in its entirety. Now, before we start, look at the three etudes that we have on the list. Look at these and think about why these particular exercises were picked. Was it because of the key? Was it because of any special technique, such as uh, fingerings or rapid fire passages or specific techniques like the ultra legato, long phrases, ability to play a beautiful melodic line? All these questions and your answers are going to give you the clues on how to proceed with these. When we look at these fast technical studies, first of all, don't practice these too fast too soon. Slow them down. Make sure it's under control. If you practice it sporadically or out of control, it will always remain out of control. Slow it down. Use a metronome, so important. Never practice without a metronome. Practice ridiculously slow if you need to, but practice it right. Get good rhythmical precision, build good muscle memory with your fingers. Second, we must make sure that the air does the work. Many times, I feel that younger players aren't using enough air to drive the instrument, thus they're wanting to make their lips buzz rather than allowing them to buzz because you have a sufficient enough air supply. Thus, we need to make sure that we're breathing very relaxed and deeply so that when we exhale, the lips can vibrate efficiently and the tone will ride on the wind. One of the things that I will do for students when they're working on etudes is have them whistle. That will help illustrate good air direction. For instance, in the second of the etudes, the lyrical, so forth like that. Notice how deeply I had to breathe and in order for the whistling mechanism to continue I had to continue to use the air. That will make things so much easier. Whether or not you can whistle is irrelevant. It's the action. Even if you blow an air pattern Same thing. You pick up the horn, you play the same way, and I guarantee you it's going to sound wonderful. Air is the key. Air is free. Use it all. Finally, one of the things that I like to do with my students is to get them to play efficiently. Most of the young students that I see when they are playing the horn, they're really working too hard to get a a decent sound. And sometimes they're not getting that decent of a sound anyway. So let's talk about just getting an efficient sound. I don't care if a person sounds bright. I don't care if a person wants to pursue a dark sound. What I'm more interested in them doing is getting an efficient sound and a resonant sound. So, pardon me. Getting my horn out here. We're going to do a little mouthpiece work. First of all, uh, you can do this uh, with me if you're not too self-conscious at home. Hopefully you're not at school when you do this. So take a nice deep breath in and just blow out. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing and we're going to buzz our lips on the mouthpiece. Don't use your tongue. 
just use a breath attack. So it's going to be like a breath in and out. Somebody once said that playing a brass instrument is like a how-to proposition. What that means when you inhale, inhale and the word how backwards. And then when you let go, it's a tube. However, in this instance, we're not uh, going to use the tongue release. We're just going to start like that. Now, what we want to do is get the largest, loudest buzz that we can. The loudness isn't a result of a lot of air. It is a result of air, but it's not forced air. The buzz comes from the aperture or the vibrating portion of the lip in the middle here. Your mission to playing efficiently is to make sure that that aperture is very relaxed and it's flapping like crazy. So get the loudest buzz possible. Whether it's that pitch or if a lower pitch works, whatever. I do that a few times, maybe two or three times. Hold it out as long as you can. See if you can go eight seconds. If you're really great, try 12 seconds. Then, you do that a couple of times, put the mouthpiece in the horn, take the lead pipe, crack it like this, so you're going to be playing in a little longer lead pipe, and do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to try that again. Your mission is to make sure that the intensity level stays the same and the quality of the buzz stays the same and it doesn't quiver. That last time it was quivering just a little bit I'm not, and I'm not too happy with that. And I'll do that a couple of times just to get the feeling established. This is my pre-warm-up. I do this almost every time that I get the horn out. Then I'll play a mid-range note. I like the second line G. I'll do it the same thing. Take a nice deep breath in, breath attack. Get four counts rest. And in case something happens like that, I'm not right on it, I'll do that again. I'll dial it up. Sounds a little bit raucous maybe in this particular venue, my studio, but uh, you get into the hall that's going to have a lot of projection, a lot of roundness, a lot of color, and it's going to project like crazy. The more you feel ease about the horn, approach it logically, you're going to have a lot more fun with it. So. This concludes the preliminary comments and look for the other videos that talk about the audition etudes one by one. Thanks a lot and good luck in your preparation.